Challenging. Uh, it's particularly challenging this year because it really was a very delicate balancing act to manage due to the different competing demands and pressures. On the one hand, we had to try and get our fiscal position to a more sustainable one, especially after spending so much during COVID. But yet we can't taper down too quickly because the economy is still weak and you know we don't want to make things worse. And because of inflation, many people want help with cost of living pressures. And yet, at the same time, if you do too much on cost of living, you may inadvertently push up inflation and fuel demand. So how do you find the sweet spot? So this was what we, this was the challenge we faced, trying to put all these together and finding the sweet, sweet spot in this budget. And I think in the end, we've tried to do that by tapering it down. Um, it's, it's still a deficit, but much smaller, yeah. and focusing our spending on groups that really need them. Okay. So we had to prioritize looking at economic competitiveness, helping families in particular, and then the lower income groups. Okay, which, which we'll break, break down, down and get into in just a little bit. But uh, I know it's just been a couple hours yet, but what sort of reaction or feedback have you had from either people, citizens, or, or even businesses, whether the local companies or, or MNCs to the budget? Well, the initial reaction tends to be focused on the headline items. So I think families are happy with the, all the family-friendly uh, measures. Uh, the Singaporeans, I think, are responding well to the cost of living support measures, particularly for the lower and middle income groups. And we've got also some positive responses from businesses, particularly with regard to the um, innovation measures that we are providing in the budget. So uh, if we could take a step back, I mean, the backstory to this latest budget is obviously Singapore, like most other nations around the world or governments around the world, have had no choice, have been forced to spend and spend big, including in Singapore's case, digging into your fabled strategic reserves to try and get the country, its people, its companies, etc., over COVID, as well as its aftermath, the inflationary shocks, supply chain shocks. Obviously, today, as we speak, things are much better. Uh, yes, we're talking with masks off. China has just uh, reopened, etc., and things are generally recovering. So this latest budget, uh, in monetary terms, what is it an enabler for Singapore and the government to do? What is it meant to do now? The you know, we talked about the reserves and us using the reserves. We did it the last time around when the global financial crisis hit us in 2008. We used the reserves then, but our economy rebounded very quickly at that time. Our fiscal position was strong, and we were able to pay back the reserves two years later. This time it's different. Our economy has recovered back to pre-COVID levels, but our fiscal position is still quite weak and it is still very tight. And that's why we are very unlikely to be able to put back the reserve that we had drawn for this COVID-19 crisis. Yeah. Um, but given that context, given the very tight fiscal context, we have to prioritize. And the measures in the budget are really meant to better position Singapore, our economy and our society for a future that we think will be more uncertain, a world that will be more troubled.